Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In this video we'll talk about the application object. And we're going to start with the application object because it sits at the top of the hierarchy and it represents the entire Microsoft Excel application. But probably you're not going to use it as much as you would use the workbook or worksheet and, and especially the range object. So with the application object, we can get or set information about the application itself. We can also show or hide components of the application interface. We can enable or disable the display of notifications and alerts. Or we can also display a dialog to open or save files. We're going to see all that and some other things in this video. So let's move to the Visual Basic Editor and first we'll see some properties to get and set information about the application. So application info. And the way to reference the application object is very simple as there is only one instance of the application. It's a bit more complicated with the other objects, with the workbook object for example or the worksheet object, but with the application we simply write application. And then when we add the dot, we have here the list of properties and methods. So let's see some of the properties to get information about the application. And probably the name property is the, is the simplest we can get. And that returns the name of the application, which is Microsoft Excel. If we put that into a variable and we display app name, we get the name of the application. We can also get the version of the application installed or the path where the application is installed. All these properties are read-only properties, so we can only get the information. But many other properties are read-write properties, so we can also set or change the information. That's, for example, the default file path property, where we can get or also set with an equal sign the path where files are saved and that follows the Windows file path so in the C drive that would be something like this for, for example. That can be useful when working with files that's set in the default path where we want to save files for example. Another property we can use is the caption property to set a caption next to the file name for example if I write here Excel Macromania and I run the macro I'm going to get the caption here next to the file name. We can also get or set the username in Excel with application username. And if we put that into a variable, we get the name of the Excel user in this computer. And that's the name we can see here under options, username. And we can also change the name. So if I write here application username equals other user, that would update the name of the user. Usually, the author of a file takes the name of the username. If we want to change that, we need to use other property, which is actually a property of the workbook object. In that case, we would need to reference the workbook, for example, with active workbook, and then write bulletin document properties. This one here you see specifying the author. And here we could change the name of the, of the author. I'm not, I'm not going to run this, but if you need to change the user or the author, you can use this code here. We can also target the application object to show or hide components of the interface. For example, we can show or hide the formula bar with application display formula bar down here equals true. That would actually display the formula bar, which I don't have right now. So if I play, now you see the formula bar is here. We can show it or hide it with false. We can also hide the status bar down, down here with application 
display status bar equals false and we can also hide the scroll bars in the same way so if I run now these three lines of code you see we have hidden the status bar down here the scroll bars on the right hand side and the formula bar and we can also set the application to display full screen and in that case it displays only the worksheet. We can also set the application visibility to false. In that case you don't see the application at all but that's useful if we want to run Excel in the background. For example showing a standalone user form. I will show you how to do that in some other video. Let's go back to normal view. We can also show or hide the headings and the grid lines with VVA but in that case we need to target the window object instead. So with active window display headings equals false and active window display grid lines equals false in this case, this removes the headings and the grid lines, as you see there. But again, those are properties of the window object, not the application object. We can also change the cursor, and it can be one of these four options. By default, the cursor changes every time you hover on, on some of the items. It can be the northwest arrow, but it can be this other cursor when you are typing etc uh, etc et however if you set one of the other options it will always stay the same the beam the northwest arrow or the weight now let's see how to display some notifications and enable or disable the display of alerts and other messages first of all we can display a message in the status bar but for that we need to see the status bar first which we have removed earlier so display status bar equals true and then we can use a status bar and write any message or notification there. For example, Excel is downloading your data. Let me play that. And as you see down here in the status bar now, it says Excel is downloading your data. This message will stay there until another notification is triggered. We can also remove that message and leave the default message by setting that to null or empty. So if I click now, it says ready. We can also enable or disable displaying alerts. Alerts pop up, for example, when you close a file without saving or when you try to delete a sheet, for example. So we can avoid that while running a macro using the application display alerts set to false. So let's see an example. Let's add some other worksheets here. Now, if we try to delete one of the worksheets, Excel displays this notification. If we do that in the macro, we're gonna interrupt the macro execution. So in order to avoid that, we set display alerts to false. Then we can say sheet three delete, and then we can get display alerts back to true. So, and we can use this also when closing a file without saving, for example, and with any other action that will trigger an alert. We can also enable and disable events, and events are enabled by default. We can set it to false to avoid the trigger of events while running a macro. Imagine we have some events here on sheet one, and that's something we cover in a previous video in this series. So if we have the selection change event, and we can set it to display a message whenever the selection changes in sheet one. So if we go to sheet one, 
and change the selection is going to display a message. However, we may want to avoid that during the macro execution. In that case, we would run, in that case, we would set enable events to false, perform any tasks the macro requires to, to perform, and then set the enable events back to true. We can also avoid the ask to update links warning that we usually get when we have some links in the workbook. And that's set in the ask to update links to false. And that's something we probably want to add when opening the file. So that could be added here under this workbook with the open event to make sure it doesn't ask to update the links if we want to avoid that. We can also avoid a screen updating by setting the screen updating property to false. And this can be useful sometimes when we just want to see the final result of a macro. Let me show you. This is a Sudoku generator. If we run the macro to create a puzzle with a screen updating, it looks like this. So we see how the numbers are added randomly and how they are removed to create the, the puzzle. And it takes some time because it's writing the numbers to the worksheet. We can avoid that setting a screen updating to false. So I'm going to uncomment this. I just did it for, I just did it to show you. So if we set the screen updating to false, now we don't see the process. We don't see what's going on. We just see the final result and it's much faster. We can also use some properties and methods of the application object to display or launch a dialog box to select files or folders or to open or save files. There are basically two ways to do it. One is using the file dialog property of the application, which accepts one of these four constants. We can have a file picker, a folder picker, a dialog open, or a save as. So let's click, for example, on the file picker. And we usually set that to a variable. Let's say my dialog. And we can previously declare my dialog as a file dialog. And then we can simply say my dialog show. So if we run the macro, it's going to show a dialog to pick a file. Now we can assign to a variable my dialog selected items. And in this case, if we just select one file, then we can display the name and the path to access that file. So if we select book one, it displays the path and the name of the file. So with this information, we can open that file. We can do several things. So that's basically one of the ways to do it. The other way is using get open file name. And that's a method. And it has the advantage that it allows to set a file filter and also to set a title of the dialog. And we can also set the multi-select to true if we want to select more than one file. So for example, if we just want to open Excel files, we would set the file filter to Excel files only. And we can set a title and also allow to select multiple files. And that's file filter. And if we put that into a variable, let's say selected files, and we add here and here the parentheses, and we also declare selected files as a variant, then we can loop, then we can loop through other file, with, let's call it new file as a variant as well, using a for each new file in selected files when selecting more than one file. And we can display the name of a file like this. So if I run the macro now, it 
it opens the dialog. Let's say I select these two files here to open and then it gives me the name with the path for each of the files. There are some other interesting properties of the application object. One, for example, is the color property, which allows to identify which button or shape was clicked when calling a macro. So, for example, if we add a button here, to run one of the macros, let's say this one, and we call it button one or whatever we call it, we can set that to a variable, so color name equals application color, and it will tell us which button was clicked. So now if I click the button, it displays its button one. So if we have more buttons in the same worksheet, and we want to, you know, to do something, calling, uh, calling the same macro, yeah, application other in this case, and we want to identify, and, we'll, uh, and we want to uh, have different actions depending on the button we are clicking. So we use application color to tell us, hey, it was button two, so we're gonna do this, or it was button three, so we're gonna do something else. Another useful function of the application, in this case is a method of the application object, is the method intersect. This allows to see if the selected cell or range intersects with a given range. So for example, if we have some data in range A1 to D4, and then we select any cell and we want to check if that's within that range, we would use if application intersect the range A1, D4 selection is nothing, then we could display a message uh, out of bounds. And else, if it's within the range, we could say it is in scope or something like that. And let's say we have some data here in that range, A1 to D4. And we could put this within an event procedure, this one, the one we used earlier, and if we change the selection within the range, it says it's in scope, yeah, it's in the range, but if we, but if we select something outside of the range, it's gonna say out of bounds, or it's gonna do whatever we want the macro to do, right? So here is inside, and here is outside. So that's another useful function of the application object. And there are many more. So you can just type application dot and you will see here all the list of properties and methods that you may need to use in your macros. I just show you today some of the most useful. In the next video, we're gonna look at application events. So we will have a look at some of the application methods to respond to some external events. And then we will also see how to set event procedures for the application object. See you in the next video and thanks for watching.